I'd like to welcome you to worship on June 7th, 2020. It's the worship of the Pluckerman Presbyterian Church. My name is Ian Rankin. I'm the pastor of the church, and it's a joy to have you with us today. Well, friends, as we worship together today, uh, there are a few things that I'm, I'm sure you notice are going to be a wee bit different. Uh, I've got something of a different background. I, I'm not in my study, as I so often am, nor am I in the sanctuary, uh, but we're, gathered, um, I'm, we're, we're all gathered together in, in our home. So I'm in my home as well today. Uh, today we celebrate the sacrament of, of Holy Communion. Uh, we're having at-home communion today, so I thought it was most appropriate for me to join you in my home as you are in your homes. Uh, I want to encourage you uh, to, to have ready some bread and some wine so that when it comes the time to celebrate the sacrament, uh, we have all these pieces together. If you've not done that yet, please feel very free to pause the video. Uh, it will, will be right where, where you left us when you come back. I do want to remind you of a, of a couple of things that continue to be happening in the life of, of our church. Uh, we have a couple of Bible studies that are going on, uh, one on a Sunday evening, uh, the other on a Thursday morning. Uh, on the Sunday evening study, we're actually taking time to, to go through the Westminster Shorter Catechism to look at, the, at the, the, the issues that are central to our faith. What, to ask ourselves a question, what do we really believe? On uh, Thursday mornings, we're starting a brand new study uh, on Richard Foster's book on prayer. So if you'd like to be a part of either of those Bible studies, shoot me an email or, 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 or message me and let me know. And I would love uh, to, to reach out to you and give you the information that you would need to be able to be a part of those, uh, one of those Bible studies. You can be part of both of them as well. Uh, and if we have too many people, we'll start some fresh Bible studies. If you'd like to be, to be part of starting a new group, that's another thing you could do. Please reach out to me and I'd be glad to talk to you about what would be involved in starting another group. All of these groups are, are hosted on Zoom. I, I want to remind you as well that a Vacation Bible School is coming up. Uh, we don't have a, an in-person Vacation Bible School, but we certainly do have an online uh, Vacation Bible School. Uh, there's a link to the sign up page for that in the description, both on Facebook and on YouTube. So you can click on that and you'll find more information about Vacation Bible School. Also talking about Facebook and YouTube, I subscribe, like, hit the bell for notifications so that you can be kept up to date with everything that's going on in the life of the Pluckerman Presbyterian Church. As well, I want to continue to, to, to remind you uh, that you have the opportunity to, to, to support the work of the church through our Give Now page uh, on our website. Uh, I know many of you are continuing to give faithfully and we're very grateful for your continued support. Uh, for those of you who have not taken the opportunity to give, don't feel any pressure to do so, but if you'd like to give to support the continuing work of the church and of our mission partners, please feel very free to go to our website. You'll see a link in the description, uh, both on Facebook and YouTube, so that you can go to the Give Now page. Friends, let's continue the worship of God.
today's scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I've got no idea where to start with my sermon today. There have been so many things going on in our society, and I, I, I can't believe I'm actually going to say this, but the, but the coronavirus almost made things easy. Uh, that was all we really felt like we had to worry about. It was all that we felt like we had to be thinking about for the longest time. We were really kidding ourselves on, but nonetheless, we'll, we'll look back over the next few weeks and we'll look back to the last few months and we'll wish for the good old coronavirus days, won't we? So what's been happening over the last 10 days, 12 days? Well, we've seen a, another black man killed by an out-of-control police officer while his own squad mates stood by and did absolutely nothing. And it's not the first time that that's happened and it's only the, the tip of the iceberg in, in terms of the way people of colour have been treated for, for, for so many years by so many people in our society. We've, we've heard and seen over the last couple of weeks story after story from young black men who are, who are viewed with suspicion wherever they go. I hope and pray that this time we don't close our eyes as we so often do. We've seen peaceful protest marches turn into riots and looting. We've also seen the best of people of all colours and races and creeds as they've come together to speak into and against the brokenness in our society, pleading for things to change. We've heard people get all bent out of shape when they hear the phrase, black lives matter, equivocating that all lives matter. Surely that's true. Well, all lives do matter. Of course they do. But not all lives have been shown that they do matter. The needs of the few sometimes have to outweigh the needs of the many. Imagine, imagine if you came to me one Sunday and you asked me to pray for your mother who had cancer during the pastoral prayers uh, on, on a Sunday morning service and I insisted on only praying for all of those in the world who had cancer without mentioning your mother once. How do you think that would work out? Imagine if Jesus had stayed with the 99 sheep and left the one Let's not equivocate. Black lives matter. And then we saw the President of the United States of America clear the patio of a church and stand in front of the church sign holding a Bible. Now, regardless of what you or I, regardless of what you or I might think of that particular moment, it's proven to be a moment of division in the church. There are those who see Trump standing up for righteousness and holding forth the word of God. And there are those who see it as an act of sacrilege by an utterly godless man. However you view it, it was not a moment that brought people together. Rather, it heightened the divide that there already is in this country and the divide that there is in the church. So, so where do I go? What, what do I do? What am I supposed to say? What am I meant to talk about with all of this that's going on? Well, in order to answer these questions, I need to answer another more basic question. And what's that question? Well, what's the task of the preacher? Well, that's not a hard question to answer. The task of the preacher is to proclaim the word of God to the people of God. That's my task. Now let me put it another way. We know 
that Jesus is the Word of God. So my task is to make Jesus known. So on this day, with all that we're facing, with all that we're dealing with or, or perhaps not dealing with, on this day when we have the Great Commission as our text, where, where, where am I to go? What, what am I to do to make the Lord Jesus known? Where is he in this text for today? Where is he for this particular moment? Well, the text that we had read this morning is actually bookended uh, by the presence of Jesus. It ends with his promise where he says, And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. And it begins with his power. All authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. A promise and power. His promise and his power. So where is Jesus? Well, first of all, if we think about his power, that word that's used is is better translated as, as, as authority. Authority is linked to, to authorship. It's his story. He's not only the subject to the story, but he's also the author of the story. We read in the book of Revelation that Jesus is described as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one by whom, with whom, in whom, and for whom all things began, and in whom all things will be brought together when everything else is said and done. And one of the most robust doctrines in the Reformed tradition is that of the absolute sovereignty of God. God is in charge. God has a plan. And all things, uh, he's, he's, he's working together for the good, for his plan. We know that God is love. If the Bible tells us nothing else, it tells us that God is love. The Bible also tells us that God is good. You know, some Presbyterians like to, to use that as a chant. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. If we affirm that God is sovereign, which we do, and if we affirm that God is love, which we do, and if we affirm that God is good, which we do, then when things look like they're messed up the way that they seem to be right now, then we have to fall back on the things that we know to be true. God is in charge. God is love. God is good. And we may not understand what's going on. We might not understand why things are happening the way that they are. But I wonder if we can trust. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Do you really believe that? Because right now that might be the only thing that you can hold on to, to get you through to tomorrow. That's the power. And then the promise. I will be with you until the end of the age. As much as that first statement was about the sovereignty of God, this, this really highlights another of the great themes of the Reformed faith, the providence of God. There are times like right now when we're, when we're physically apart from each other, when our society feels like it's being ripped apart, when the church as a whole seems to be coming from very, very different places and our leaders seem to be causing more division than they seem to be bringing people together. It's at a time like this that we, that we need not only remember that God is sovereign, but that in Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit, He is with us. He's always been with us. And He's all that we need. It's at times like this that we have to cling to the great truths of the faith that we believe. We have to hold on to the things that we know to be true because it certainly doesn't feel like it. God is sovereign. God is with us. He's with us in the midst of all of this seeming mess right now. There's a wonderful passage in the book of Job where, where if you know the story of Job, you know that Job has had all kinds of awful things happen to him. His life has literally fallen apart. He's been faithful to God, but he turns to God and he demands an answer 
for why all these things have happened to him. And let me read to you from, from Job chapter 38 uh, how, how, how God answers him from the midst of the whirlwind. This is what God says to Job. And the passage goes on beyond this. I'm only going to read a few verses. God says, Where were you when I laid earth's foundations? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and the angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, this far you may come and no further. And so God goes on in this manner for a number of chapters, speaking of his sovereignty and speaking of his providence. And when, and when he's faced with the truth of who God is, this is how Job ultimately responds. Oh, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You, you asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I didn't understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak, I will question, and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. You and I are filled with as many questions as Job. But like him too, may we know that God is sovereign, that he provides, that he is with us. And however little we may understand, may we continue to trust in his goodness and in his love. As the hymn writer wrote, the sure provisions of my God attend me all my days. O oh, may your house be my abode, and all my work be praise. Here would I find a settled rest, while others go and come. No more a stranger, nor a guest, but like a child at home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so friends, as we continue in our worship this morning, I want to invite you to, to gather together uh, the, the, the elements that we're going to use to, to celebrate uh, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper together. Uh, please have in front of you uh, a, a piece of bread. Perhaps you have a roll, perhaps you have some crackers. That's perfectly fine. Uh, our tradition allows us to use uh, bread that is common to our culture. And we have such a diverse culture that any type of bread or crackers that you have in front of you would be, would be more than sufficient. I also I, I trust that you have a, a cup or a, or a glass of grape juice or, or wine in front of you that you're able to use as we celebrate this uh, sacrament together. As we begin, let me invite you to bow your heads and let's pray together. Oh, gracious Lord, we are so thankful for this opportunity to be together in your presence. We thank you that where we cannot be physically together, we can be together in this way, even as we break bread and even as we share this cup, as distant as we are, the body of Christ unites us. Oh, we are your body. We are a very broken body. And yet in this moment, Around these tables, we are united and we are brought back together again. We are made one in Christ and these tables in these different homes, they become one table, the table of our Lord. So dear Father, send your Holy Spirit upon us, each one. And upon these, your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread that we break may be the communion of the body of Christ and the cup that we share may be the communion of the blood of Christ. And may we indeed be made new and be made whole 
in this feast that we share. Now hear us as we pray, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we gather around this table at the invitation of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And after he had given thanks to his Father, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said to them, Take and eat. This is my body. It's broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks to his Father in heaven. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. It's poured out that the sins of many might be forgiven. Whenever you do this, remember me. The bread and the wine, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken and shed for you and for me. These are God's gifts for God's people. May we feast together. The body of Christ, broken for you. May we eat and be thankful. blood of Christ shed for you. May we drink together and be thankful. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Lord, we thank you for these, your gifts of bread and wine. We thank you that in feasting together, you have brought us back together as the body of Christ. As we have feasted and as we have been refilled, we ask that you might give to us the courage to go to our different places in the knowledge that you are with us, that you are in charge, that you have never left us. May we trust what we know rather than what we feel. Now hear us as we pray, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, may we affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, 
our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain in your hearts forever. Amen. Thank you.